Today we're going to talk about gear acquisition. Today we're going to talk about gear acquisition. Oh my gosh. Today we're going to talk about gear acquisition syndrome and I've got a giveaway. Hello, I'm Jamie Maldonado. This is Cameron and Sakura. It's been kind of a different week and so I thought I would just shake up the format a little bit. I'm going to go into this a little unscripted. You can call it gas, but I mean, it sounds so immature. How about we just say GAS? So the phenomenon of GAS, as far as I can tell, basically originated with musicians and they would buy uh, guitars and amp that would supposedly put their music over the edge or they just thought, oh, this one's gonna be great. And uh, I saw it a lot with musicians who um, I was trying to make clients and you know they couldn't spend a couple hundred bucks for band photos but they could uh, they could drop a couple grand on a guitar they're going to play on two songs so uh it, it comes up a lot in the internet discourse of course in photography so let's say uh you want to buy the new lens the new 1.2 lens just spend and spend and spend and it comes up a lot the stereotypical person with gis would be somebody who, uh, as the saying we go, has more dollars than cents. And I have been accused uh, not of having more dollars than cents, although possibly that too, even though I don't have that many dollars. But uh, I've been accused of having GAS and uh, just always being after the next gear thing. And I guess it's been kind of true in, at certain times, but then again, I'm also a believer in the right tool and having something that uh, works with you in harmony. And I'm also the firm believer in use whatever you've got. Uh, I'm doing a little slideshow in this episode of some older photographs. And you'll see things like these pictures I took in New York City. And it was uh, 2005. And uh, it was my first time in New York City. I uh, wanted to document it. And I had a... Nikon D1 at the time, which I was not a professional photographer. I was a uh, newspaper copy editor and designer. I had always been into photography and that was my actually started in high school. The story's kind of cool because I uh, wanted to be a photographer, but I was poor. And I remembered my older brother in middle school got to join the yearbook staff and got to bring home the, the, the yearbook SLR a couple of times. And I'm like, okay, well, I'm too poor to buy a camera. I'll join the yearbook and I'll get to use theirs maybe a couple times. And what happened was the first day of school, I walk in and the teacher is like, no one wants to do this. Here's the camera. I had a whole year, almost nonstop, of having that camera with me. And it was really cool. Uh, I got to do a bunch of things I never would have been able to do if I didn't have that. And yeah, I could have gotten an Instamatic camera and gotten some... Uh, some experience and I wasn't a great photographer, but it allowed me to get a lot of things out of my system Untold number. I have a shoebox full of negatives still from high school I got to save my negatives from the trash, which is super cool And that's how I got those few pictures that you saw here. So I went to college and Was on the yearbook staff there, but also they had a photography program at the college at Kilgore College and it's since been shuttered except for a class but that's another topic yet. Took photography one and you get to check out cameras at least in this program and I shot again uh, a handful of pictures. I got uh, a couple of SLRs. Uh, this is still the film days enough that what I could get was a film camera and digital cameras were outlandishly expensive. I did that and uh, I just it was hard for me to get on a roll at this point because I knew basic operations, but I hadn't learned what I wanted to shoot, and film was too precious to... I just kind of tottered along, did okay, and I had some disposable income. I decided, even though I wasn't a photographer, I was bent on being a newspaper page designer my entire life, I dropped a, probably a, a grand $1,500, $2,000 on a used Nikon D1. And that uh, was their flagship, and it was uh, the D1X was really their flagship at this point. So it was 2003. I got it for my birthday for myself, as I say, for my 23rd birthday. And I had this uh, tank of a pro camera, just shooting it because I felt compelled to. 
and you could call that an ultimate act of GAS. But it was awesome because I just shot everything, and eventually what that turned into was I brought it to some concerts and uh, went to sh some shows from this band called Isley, who's from around here, but they were doing national tours. So I almost started photographing concerts for them, and I got really into concert photography. And that turned into going places, which is how I wound up in New York City, by the way, and taking pictures of friends. And that turned into, I want to take pictures of people more. I want to take portraits, I guess. Even though through all of this, I didn't take myself as ser seriously as an artist, but I wanted, and you, I felt compelled to take pictures. And that's what I did. And some of these are what you're seeing is what I took. And I just took in a lot of pictures and some were awful, a lot of them were, but then you would occasionally hit on one and that would be like this uh, revelation. I didn't take myself seriously as an artist, but I felt compelled to take pictures and it would go from one thing to another. It was like, well, why don't I do this? Or that was neat. I'm going to try to do that again. And the compulsion carried through. And because I had a digital camera oh, at a time when a lot of people didn't have them for uh, luxury unless they were very rich, uh, I could do that because I had the gear. And so it's gotten me thinking a lot about, you know, uh, the rest is history, as they say. I took a lot more photos and realized I wanted to be a portrait photographer and at the time a, a concert photographer, but that faded with time. That's another, uh, another episode entirely, of course. But I eventually learned to take myself seriously as an artist which is uh the reason it it the fact that it took so long for me to reach that point of acceptance is one of the reasons i have this uh vlog because i want you to realize that and take yourself seriously as an artist a lot faster than i did because i feel like i spun my wheels for a long time join michelle singletary stephanie k smith sarah hugo hernandez ronnie Pittman, and may as patrons. My Patreon contributes just a small amount of cash right now, but it's a huge help considering that this is a nights and weekend passion project. So your contributions matter a lot to me and I appreciate my patrons. Actually, there is this article I read and I will uh, link it. In. Joshua Sarinana um, has, the, I, I butcher that name, I'm sorry. if somehow you're watching this or you know how to say that name he has this thing called the science of gear acquisition syndrome and he explains uh you know basically what gas is and you've heard that a lot if you've watched a lot of photo uh channels and if you read stuff like f stoppers and a lot of them are kind of this like shaming photographers for for their gas and i think it's kind of silly because uh I've gone on both sides of it, but ultimately what it comes down to is my exploration of photography equipment and my curiosity is what gave me my vocabulary as a photographer. And the thing that held me back from being a serious artist was the fear of uh, picking something and then being trapped and not liking it and just personal insecurity. So basically he talks about the science of, of placing your insecurities into an action in this case into buying gear buy that camera it will save you as a photographer and keep you alive and keep you afloat and it's your shield and it's your uh lifeline because it's really an existential crisis that you're in and i noticed this in myself i, I find that my gear lust is its worst when I'm having trouble, when I can't get shoots to happen, when I'm not taking photos I like. And you do kind of use that as a way to prop yourself up emotionally. And that's what you need to pay attention to if you have GAS. A lot of times what it turns into is these people bullying people out of a, like a reverse GAS thing where you're trolling to fight your own insecurities instead of helping somebody overcome their insecurities when you feel the pull to get some gear definitely take a step back and ask yourself do i need this or am i just uh feeling insecure 
or afraid at the moment artistically. And a lot of times you'll come out on the side of saying, uh, yeah, I'm feeling a little, a little idle and just antsy and just really want to take photos. And that's when you concentrate on how you take more photos and get more work done and allow yourself to do that. Uh, if you want to be better at photography, the primary thing you have to do is to take photos. And that's what this journey of, um, 20 something years I'm showing you on this slideshow is, is that me taking just mountains of photos, uh, battling for years against sucking, but, uh, I don't think I suck, but it, it, insecurity is real. And my biggest obstacle in all of that wasn't equipment, but, uh, it was just my uh, inability to say, Hey, I want to be, or I am an artist and I'm going to take this picture. One of the things that were hindering me uh, was guilt from all these people saying, oh, you just have GAS. But this is me again saying that you're valid, your art is valid, and the only way you're gonna get better is if you just keep, keep taking pictures and keep doing that critical review and that analysis and sharing and repeating. Um, when you find that your gear is getting in the way of that, it might be time for an upgrade and that's okay. Speaking of gear, I'm gonna feed your gear lust and I've been getting a lot of good attention and followers probably until this episode when everyone's bored to death and doesn't wanna watch. But uh, I have a giveaway as advertised and I it's not a big fancy thing, but uh, w the way I'm gonna do it is when I hit 600 followers, I'm not going to do like a raffle thing. This is pretty informal. I don't have the means for that. But anyway, um, so basically what I'll, I want you to do is leave a comment, subscribe, uh, like the video if you want to, please. And I will do some kind of drawing for Diana clone. This is basically a 1970s style Diana plastic film camera well, I meant to shoot with it this episode but I didn't quite have the chance but this is like uh like uh, Nancy Rexroth used basically on Iowa it's kind of like the original Holga and uh plastic fantastic I mean listen to this I got it in Santa Fe New Mexico and we're gonna shoot with this next week and it could be yours if you subscribe and if you've already subscribed cool just leave a comment uh and w as soon as i hit 600 whoever has left a comment and entered will have a chance of winning this anyway i'm about to run out on this card and i gotta edit this thank you so much for watching please don't forget to like and subscribe and i will see you next week thanks bye